41. The bowler on your screen there, Shane Lee, just in his first over. Two legitimate deliveries. He's also bowled a wide in that. Wayne Holdsworth's been very economical. Good spell from Holdsworth. Neil Maxwell, the wicket taker. And Phil Alley, a big six foot ten left hander, also bowled a couple of good overs. A wide signal there as well, and the bowler thought he'd got him out. So the umpire there is Darrell Hare. McPhee hasn't scored for a while. He's on strike going for that one. Certainly had it covered, but uh, fair enough decision there by umpire Darrell Hare. That's the situation in respect of uh, the 1993-94 Mercantile Mutual Cup competition. Queensland have played four and won three, so they've got six points, but New South Wales playing their third. Well, way down the leg side, quite right, another wide. Shane Lee's gonna have to straighten himself out one way or the other. And he's just getting back to the points table. New South Wales in their third match. They've won both of their games so far on four points. And have a look at that net run rate. That's very good. Followed by Western Australia, who have won two of the three matches they've played. A little uh, star there indicates that uh, they're in this match now. So it'll be interesting to see if New South Wales can win three out of three. Very well placed. But... The uh, Western Australians have a very strong batting lineup. McPhee out there, just struggling a little bit at the moment. 41 balls for 16. Martin's out there, though. He's uh, got 13 of 22. Moody, Valletta, Julian, Tim Zura. All good players in one-day competition. Though to come, so there's a lot of batting left. There certainly is. Mark McPhee, a little so, so far. But he's usually a man who really gets on with the job when he opens the batting. Now he is trying to get on with the job and a little fortunate to get away with that one. I'll probably take two. As Kevin Robinson does the cleaning up at fine leg. Yes, that's his uh, first run in 16 balls. So he certainly has been bogged down a little bit. Says something about the bowling, I suppose. Uh, that really was a little lucky. That was an old fashioned heave. Let's have a look at this. He tries to heave this away over Cow Corner. Really, Mark McPhee's going to realise he has Damien Martin at the other end, who is a very quick scorer. McPhee's really got a, an anchor job to do. Doesn't have to score that quickly, just occupy the crease at this stage. So just uh, reiterating for those of you watching this telecast over in the West, some changes to your side. Bradley Hogg out of the side. Stuart McGill also in the uh, dressing room today. And Warren Wishard left out of the side. Those changes made for this one day match. Yes, McGillan and Wishart both bowled spin here during the Shield game. And interesting, they have brought Jamie Stewart in, another left arm orthodox. So two spinners out and just one replacing those. Oh, and uh, that one very close to the off stump. Frustrated Shane Lee there. Yes, that's unfortunate. Seven runs off his over. Two for 47. Fruit is one of nature's perfect foods. Sweet and juicy, full of natural goodness. But if you can't get your kids to eat their fruit, give them Cotty's Fruit Snacks. They're the perfect all-natural snack made from 100% pure fruit. And now you can get them diced. Perfect. Cotty's kids know real fruit when they squeeze it. 15 overs have been bowled now, so the field can spread out. Two for 47. Martin, the danger man at the moment. So we're now going to see Bill Alley continue. He's bowled very well so far. Two overs, no maidens, no wicket for five. Very tall, very strong. Is he as fit as he could be? Is he one of these youngsters that's going to kick on and play test cricket? Close eye on him in this match. Way across the right-hander there. Very close to the stumps. Bill Alley, six foot ten, big and solid, has the ability to bowl exceptionally fast. 
It's so inconsistent. One of the frustrating things for himself, or his captain, for the New South Wales selectors and coach has been Phil Alley's inconsistency. He's bowled some of the best spells in Australian cricket this year. Alan Border was very impressed with this man. In that initial shield game up in Brisbane. And unfortunately, not quite putting it all together. Huge potential, Phil Alley. Just have a look at the pitch here. Um, had a talk this morning to Peter Leroy. This is a brand new wicket. It's never been played on before. It's bang, slap bang in the centre of the square. That's uh, around about the test match area. As I said, it's brand new. And he thought there might just be a little bit uh, in it this morning. He's trying to roll all the grass into the surface. But, uh, so far, so good. It's played very well. Ball is uh, coming onto the bat. And uh, that's the view, a close-up view of it. So it's a brand new pitch and uh, could well be used in Test Match Cricket right in the middle of the square. It looks like a very good wicket, this. As Tony said, I think it is the Test Match wicket, not the wicket they actually used in the South African Test Match, but what, what would normally be called the Test Match wicket, right in the middle of the square, this one. And so far, that pitch has played very well. The bounce has been nice and even. Some good carry through to Phil Emery. We haven't seen the spinners in action yet. Interesting to see whether Gavin Robertson will get some turn. I doubt if we'll see a great deal of turn. Gavin Robertson is coming off a, an excellent Sheffield Shield match. Five wickets yesterday against Western Australia. So he'll be keen to get the ball in his hand. And I don't think there is Gavin Robertson. Very successful replacement for Greg Matthews. Nice placement there from Martin. There's a man back at square leg, so they'll have to settle for one. Just watching Phil Alley. My mail is that uh, perhaps he's not as fit as he could be. Doesn't uh, work as hard as he should work. Perhaps as hard as some of the other fast bowlers work. There's no shortcuts these days in terms of being a fast bowler. And you really have a, a heavy program, a lot of one-day matches, a lot of shield games. And if you're a test player, a heavier program. We'll come back to that in a moment. It's two for 49. You know, Mercandale Mutual offers competitive insurance on everything from cars to household and commercial property, as well as some of the country's leading life and disability covers. They have tremendous strength in superannuation, finance and investment. But I reckon it's the award-winning speed and efficiency of their service that's made them so unshakable over the years. So if you're with Mercantile Mutual, rest assured, your future is in good hands. Whether you're drinking it in the sun with friends or just doing it solo, you can enter the Sunkist and Solo Summer Plunge. You could win a fantastic Daihatsu Ferosa four-wheel drive. Sailboards, surfboards, jet ski, mountain bike, kayaks, plus heaps of instant win prizes. So dive into wherever you buy your Solo and Sunkist and take the summer plunge. between the red and yellow beach flags represents the safest part of the beach to swim. Volunteer surf lifesavers and council lifeguards patrol this area watching out for your safety. If you do get into trouble, just raise your hand and signal for help. And remember, when at the beach, swim only between the red and yellow flags. And when out in the sun, cover up and use a 15 plus sunscreen. After seven years in the trade, one day auto paint Silverwater has resprayed thousands of cars. Now we'll give you top quality two pack paint from only $699 and up to a two year warranty. All this and you don't have to pay today. Pay in three months with interest free finance or as low as $16 a week. Now we have special discounts for pensioners and students. Come to one day auto paint Silverwater for all your rust cuts, body repairs, and resprays. 146 Silverwater Road, Silverwater. Open Saturdays. This pair of size 10 ladies briefs is about to be quality tested by Target. They're tested for wear and tear. They're tested for washability. They're tested for stretchability and recovery. They're tested against fading 
and finally target make sure they are still a size 10. And if they survive all that, then and only then do we put our name on them. Target, we're tougher on our clothes than you'll ever be. Inside Edge magazine is on sale all around the country. It's a very interesting addition too. The injured South African paceman Brett Schultz has delivered a few verbal bounces to the Australian batsman. He can't wait to put the wind up the Aussies on their tour of South Africa. Mark Ward takes a, a look inside the Australian dressing room during a tight test match. Finey de Villiers there has an interesting rise, um, has had an interesting rise at Test Hero, including uh, some uh, duels with things like elephants and all sorts of things. And uh, while South Africa doing battle in South Africa, Wazi Makram and Waka Yunus are waiting in line. So um, the Inside Edge magazine, the front cover featuring Alan Donald there with the words Aussie chokers on the front. That'll stir them up a little bit. And that uh, February Inside Edge is available at all news agents, Kmart's and Cole Supermarkets. That one uh, just played into the gap on the offside. That brings up the 50 now for Western Australia. 17 overs. Yes, it's worth uh, getting out and latching onto that Inside Edge magazine. Some very good articles in it and uh, some interesting observations. Said it's available in uh, all news agents Kmart, Cole Supermarkets. Another misfield. Coming back for the second note. No, I'll settle for one. So they want to be careful that sort of running. We've already seen Justin Langer meet his demise. Some very poor running. I don't think there was ever two in that one. After Neil Maxwell had made the initial misfield in the gully there, but Phil Alley was very quickly off the third man boundary. And he has got a good arm, Phil Alley. Big tall guy, looks very strong, a, a very good arm from the outfield. Slower ball, nicely placed. Fields well placed as well, just one. Shane Lee hasn't quite got it on target so far. Three wides in his first over. And normally he's a bowler who bowls with great control. Just nine legitimate deliveries sent down. Three wides in that. Only Shane Lee, very sh fast, medium-ish. Uh, bowls good outswingers and, and renowned for his accuracy, but not so far this morning. Maybe a few nerves following this big game. Now, that wasn't a bad piece of bowling as Langer made room. Tried to come down the wicket again. Uh, sorry, Martin, I always get the two confused. <laughs> Hey, to lose one's right hand and one's left handed. I meant to say Damien Martin. Damien Martin came down the wicket against Wayne Holdsworth. Wayne Holdsworth elected to go wide of off stump and Martin belted it away through cover. That time a good response from Shane Lee, spearing that ball wide of leg stump. And that's really what you've got to do when the batsman starts to charge you. Well placed, just wide of mid off there. It's running across this fast outfield and will get to the fence. Right off the meat of the bat there. McPhee getting that one away. Relieved the pressure a little bit. Not really a half volley, but a good stroke. Very well timed. Certainly that's a really more a whacker shot than a, an SCG shot through the line like that. Perhaps Phil Alley has got some options to consider now. Maybe bringing Brad McNamara on. All the spinners, Kevin Robinson, the bowl some slow stuff. Don't give the batsman any pace. Certainly pace on the bat is something the Western Australians really do like. The line and length from Shane Lee. Eight off that over. A good one for Western Australia. They're now two for 57. 
Monday on A Current Affair, the interview only Ray Martin could get. A television exclusive with Prince Charles. We're not all made like James Bond, you know. The press, the public, and the pressure of being Prince. I'm Sorry, not the boss. Paul Keating's Republic. Nothing's inevitable. And does he want to be King of Australia? Liable to be denied the great chance to be King of Australia. Oh, also this week, mums versus mums. Those who work. Can't wait to get rid of their child. And those who won't. I'm at home with my children because I think this is valuable. A Current Affair weeknights on Channel 9. 2.57, Martin, 16 of 29 balls, becoming a bit of a danger here for New South Wales. And McPhee, no doubt, getting ready to launch himself. Martin's on strike at the moment. Once again, Ali, spot on target. Just looking at uh, the graph so far for Western Australia. Those wickets slowed things up a little bit. And from the 12th over, Martin and McPhee have started to lift the rate. So it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here. That'll be a wide. A natural left hand is angled just too wide on that occasion. Umpire Bill Cameron having a fairly easy decision to make that time. Let's just have a look at Phil Alley front on. He's a very big man, six foot ten. It's about 207 centimetres. He's got a nice run up. Seems to drop that head away. That's probably why he bowled that wide in the last ball. Oh, what a catch! No, he's put it down, I think. Did he? Well, too quick for me. There in a flash, got him down and got it again. Well, that would have been a sensational catch. He didn't half recover quickly. Neil Maxwell there in the gully, and that was a full-blooded slash. Middle of the bat on this one from McPhee. A full swing of the bat, and a oh, fantastic effort. That saved four runs. Away to his left, mid-air. Good stop, that. Oh, and, uh, that one down the leg side. Maybe the left-handedness of that delivery saving Phil Alley from another wide. There's a the ball angling in towards the stumps rather than continuing down the leg side. It's certainly close to a wide. McPhee is probably ruining, missing that wide one down the leg side. Let's have a look at Phil Alley's side on. Let's have a look at his head in delivery stride. See if he keeps it steady or not. It's a good, good run up there. And then the head drops away suddenly. That wasn't too bad, actually. One of his better deliveries. What about his fitness, Jeff? I, I said that the word out there is that he doesn't work hard enough at his fitness. Is he a big trainer? Well, that's certainly a problem for Phil, particularly when New South Wales have consecutive Shield games. They have two or three games in a row. He tends to play the first one very, very well, and it drops away. He can't recover quick enough from uh, the toil you have to go through, 30 overs, say, in innings. He certainly hasn't got the, the stamina to recover quickly. and. Well, he's, he lives with Glenn McGrath, actually, and Glenn McGrath's a very big trainer. Unfortunately, Glenn being away on national duties, it's... Uh, oh, I don't think that one's out. He's pitching outside leg stump. But uh, Glenn being away from the household, uh, Phil tends to slacken off a bit. And he certainly could do a lot more running and uh, some more weight work. He's just got huge potential, this man. And none of the Australian selectors were very interested in him after that Queensland Shield game, and... Uh, he really hasn't lived up to his full potential. But still only a young man. He's still got a lot of cricket in front of him. But really, it's up to Phil in his own mind. He's got to make up that, that decision, make that quick decision, and say, look, I can make it to the top. I can play for Australia. Present, it's not in. Play off the over, WA 2 for 60. Saturday, March 19, and see Johnson, Brock, Richard, Seaton, Jones, and all the stars of Group A touring cars set the track on fire in the Gold Coast 100. Four day tickets from just $99. Live it up at the Australian FAI IndyCar Grand Prix, March 17 to 20.
Two for 60, and it uh, looks as if there's going to be a change out there now. Brad McNamara is being brought into the attack. He's uh, one of those guys that can produce a captain, a couple of wickets in uh, no time at all. Partnership breaker. McNamara just a little bit quicker and perhaps a little bit more deceptive than the batsman often perceives. He's very short, so we've got a huge contrast out there at the moment. Down one end, McNamara is a short little guy. He's a, he's a short little guy with a big man's aggression to the game, let me tell you, Tony. He runs in and bowls like he's the quickest bowler on earth. Very aggressive bowler, Brad McNamara. He's done a very good job for New South Wales in Shield games and in one day games the last couple of years. I'd love to have uh, Brad McNamara's attitude in Phil Alley's body. We'd have a man who'd play 100 test matches. His mates uh, call him the buzzard why is that it's a long story <laughs> it's a long story obviously Phil Alley making the change it's Shane Lee two overs for 15 and he has good options out there McNamara is a great option to have he's got a good slower ball he can bowl well on the SCG he knows not to pitch it up too far uh, it's a good move by Phil Alley Shane Lee just wasn't landing them. He was wide of off stump, wide of leg stump, too full, too short. Obviously not in the groove today, Shane Lee. And a good move to bring on Brad McNamara, who's one of the most experienced players in this New South Wales side. They're missing all their international players. Greg Matthews out injured. Mike Whitney up here with us in the commentary box out injured. Mike Whitney originally in the squad for this game. We expected to see him out there playing. So McNamara, one of the more experienced members of the team. And you see Brad McNamara mix his length up as that one was short of a length. He won't let the batsman start playing the numbers and predicting what length he's going to bowl. Not really short enough to pull away on that occasion from Mark McPhee. Certainly a, a thinking cricketer, a very aggressive man with a ball in his hand. Ah! Oh, that's well balled and the buzzer's got it. Oh, Great move from Phil Emery. Phil Emery congratulates Brad McNamara. Matt McNamara says thanks to the bowl, Phil. The ball before wasn't short enough to pull, and neither is this. It's a great length of the SCG. McPhee just across the line. Gee, not a good shot. I don't think Jeff Marsh will be happy with that. Neither will Mark McPhee. But Brad McNamara strikes early on in this spell. Good captaincy, good bowling. And there's some aggression from the young man. McPhee goes 27 off 57. WA now 3 for 60 in the 19th over. It's hot and it's happening at Sydney Mitsubishi. If quality and service is what you're after, look no further. Sydney Mitsubishi used cars are undercover and underpriced. There's up to 90 vehicles in stock, all makes and models. Check out our weekly used car specials with great savings. Three-year warranty available and easy finance to approve purchases. So come on in and see us at Sydney Mitsubishi Used Cars, 36 Parramatta Road, Glee. And now, from Michael Bolton, the vocalist of the 90s, comes the one thing. Bolton's sensational new album, The One Thing, featuring the hit single, Said I Loved You But I Love. Don't miss Michael Bolton, live in concert on his first Australian tour. The new album from Michael Bolton, The One Thing. Tom Moody, an informed Tom Moody, just 28 years of age out there. All his experience is going to be called upon here. 33 matches have a look at uh, his strike rate just over 70 there and a good average for that strike rate too big tom moody on the front foot straight away that's certainly a place where tom likes to play his cricket very good batsman when he's allowed to get forward he's just coming off a century let's have a look the reason tom moody's out there is this dismissal it's mcphee on the back pad on the crease knee high not a lot of bounce from Brad McNamara. You see a little of the, the height. Well, fairly, it hits him in front of the crease, but fairly close. Tom Moody gets off the mark. I'll probably look for two here, and they're coming for two. I throw the bowlers in. Well, 
Brad McNamara should have been behind the stumps on that occasion. Let's have another look at that uh, sideways angle. See how far he was down the crease here. There it goes, there. So he's uh, out of the ground a little bit. That's Jeff Lawson's work on the telestrator, I'd like you to know. Well, I think that the ball wasn't going to go over the top of the stumps. The hard part is when the batsman's a long way down to make the decision. No doubt there in the mind of umpire Hare. Two runs and a wicket, and that over. Three for 62. You know, Mercantile Mutual offers competitive insurance on everything from cars to household and commercial property. As well as some of the country's leading life and disability covers. They have tremendous strength in superannuation, finance and investment. But I reckon it's the award-winning speed and efficiency of their service that's made them so unshakable over the years. So if you're with Mercantile Mutual, rest assured, your future is in good hands. 3 for 62, 19 overs have been bowled. Western Australia won the toss, elected to bat first in this Mercantile Mutual Cup match. Martin on 17 now, Moody's with him. A couple of exciting cricketers out there with bats in their hands, and this is also an exciting young cricketer. Ali, the tall left arm over the wicket, fast bowler for New South Wales. Such a future ahead of him, especially if he gets himself really fit, builds himself up a bit. Phil Alley has immediate challenges to bowl well to a player of the calibre of Damien Martin. Damien Martin is an exceptional young player. Phil Alley has to really concentrate now to get the line length right or else Damien Martin will really get after him. Oh, well, well, well played. That was right over the top. And that's going to go for four. A pretty bold shot, that one. With Alley angling across him. I suppose it's relatively safe. They've got a man square. But I think Martin realising here that they've really got to lift this rate a little bit. So that ended up being a very good shot. A very good shot off a, a ball that really was quite a good length and quite a good line. Let's have a look at this. Good line length from Phil Alley, but Damien Martin changes the line and the length. And now Phil has to come back with something good now. He's got to think, where can I bowl? I don't want to bowl in the same spot. The left-hander may even consider coming around the wicket and cramping Damien Martin up, bowling in at leg stump. Moody gets on strike to Phil Alley for the first time. I'm sure the New South Wales players have talked about how they would bowl to Tom Moody. I believe in the Sheffield Shield game that they allowed Moody to get on the front foot and dictate terms and hardly bowls short to him at all. The one day games, there are restrictions on how short you can bowl it. Allowed bowl over the shoulder. I'm sure Phil Alley should be thinking about testing Tom with, with something a bit on the short side. Goes to the Yorker first ball, and that wasn't a bad option either. They take two, and that's well run. <laughs> Davidson had to come around to pick that up, and they got two. Welcome to our Adelaide viewers, to a lovely day here in Sydney and to this Mercantile Mutual Cup clash between New South Wales and Western Australia. Tom Moody on strike at the moment. He's out there with Damien Martin. See that Martin has rushed up to 22 now of 33 balls. The toss was won here by Western Australia. And, uh, they decided to bat first. McPhee, Marsh and Langer are the men out. 19.5 overs have been bowled. Three for 69, but Martin is beginning to look quite dangerous. And, uh, Moody has only just arrived. He's picking up the singles, just four or five balls. Valletta, Julian, Zura can all bat. They're still to come. Well done. So that's the end of the over. Western Australia now, three for 69. Pretty good pitch out there for the start of play this morning. It's a new wicket. And uh, let's go right back to the first dismissal. This was it. 
Marsh going for that one off Maxwell, getting a little edge there, and he was out caught behind. Straightforward dismissal for Jeff Marsh, just to Langer, not so straightforward. A super piece of feeling, the misfield to start off with. Rodney Davison, good pick up and throw. McPhee didn't respond to Langer's call. A great dive from Phil Emery. Bill Cameron, not a tough decision to make. Next man to go. McNamara's first over. McPhee frustrated, 27 off 57 deliveries. Trying to hoik across the line. Probably LBW. Now it's Brad McNamara continuing. They pick up an easy two there as Phil Alley does the feeling down the third man fence. McNamara in his second over. He came on because Shane Lee couldn't do the job that Phil Emery asked of him. Shane Lee went for 15 off his first two overs. So the New South Wales captain called on Brad McNamara. He responded immediately with the wicket of McPhee. Just four in the circle now. Four men all saving one. Five out. Three of those men are out on the offside. Straight to Shortwood wicket. And uh, there's the New South Wales side. There's some changes there from the Sheffield Shield game. Adam Gilchrist is out. Trevor Bayless, the veteran Trevor Bayless, comes in to replace him. Phil Alley was 12th man for the Shield game. And the left arm orthodox, a left arm wrist spinner, David Friedman out. Phil Alley in for him. How did that miss? Brad McNamara certainly doesn't know. That must have gone over middle stump. Let's have a look at this again. She seems back. Martin caught across the crease in no man's land. That went over the top of middle. This view from behind will show it quite well. Wow, just bouncing over the top. Lucky escape for Damien Martin. Comfortable single down to third man. In the commentary box now, it's going to be Bill Laurie and with him, Richie Benner. Thank you, Tony Gregg. Yes, a very interesting match here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Three for 71, Western Australia. Look down the pitch, it's nice and hard. And two of the best hitters in Australian cricket at the crease, Tom Moody and Damien Martin. Although they've lost three wickets, Western Australia with a lot of batting depth. Coletto, Julian, Zura, Angel, Spencer and Stewart to come. Tom Moody um, in good touch, had a good shield match here. And he's knocked over. Dear, oh dear. Trying to angle it down the leg, so Tom doesn't know what's happening. He's been knocked over by McNamara, who's picked up two wickets. I don't know whether it come back off the back of the bat. Moody trying to work it down the onside, but you can hear the death rattle. And looking and looking at the replay, what did this ball do? Oh, he's got just too far around. Opened up the leg stump. Clean bowled, Moody, and that's a big blow for New South Wales. Certainly is. It was a good performance from McNamara, but uh, Tom Moody certainly added to his own problems there. It's four for 72. If getting the best deal is an uphill battle, come and see Harvey Norman. This month, we have Ball & Quattro Pro Spreadsheet with built-in training for only $195. The database standard. Ball & Paradox makes managing your business and personal information easy, and it's just $295. Buy Ball & Quattro Pro & Paradox together, and you'll save an additional $95 with the Ball & Super Pack. This is a limited offer, so hurry. Harvey Norman, for the best deals going round. And round. And round. G'day. Paul Logan here, talking at you for the Variety Club. Do you know the best way to feel good about yourself? Do a good turn for someone else. Now, when you buy a Variety Club Gold Heart for Valentine's Day, you are automatically helping some sick or underprivileged kid who really needs your help. And it's a real bargain. Costs you two bucks, makes you feel like a million dollars. 1994 Gold Hearts now available from Woolworths, Westfield Shopping Towns and selected outlets. New batsman Michael Valletta, a very good average of 39.34. Reasonable strike rate of 62.9. He's at the crease because Brad McNamara is making a mess here of the Western Australian middle order, the right arm medium pacer. And his second over has two for five. And he was the guy that destroyed Victoria in the McIntyre Mitchell final. With his right arm up, out swingers bowling from the members end. McNamara, he's not a fashionable cricketer, but a very handy one. 
Went on strike. That's the over bold. It's four for 72. Let's have a look at that dismissal of Tom Moody again. Moody, a very experienced cricketer, getting too far across. Exposes his leg stumps. This ball holds its line. He just bent his knees at the wrong moment. And uh, the ball hit quite a bit of the stump. It wasn't just that it brushed it. Gave it a real good thump and then ran down to fine leg. It's almost middle stump. Tom Moody can't believe that. Just cannot believe it. Tom Moody is completely bewildered by that, but a uh, very distinctive sound would have uh, led him to believe that he may have got it wrong, as he did. If you just look at that replay a second time, which we'll show you in a moment after this next ball, you'll see that Moody is actually walking across the crease before the ball's delivered. And that is absolutely fatal. Just keep your eyes fixed on Tom Moody's feet in this replay. Just watch his feet, nothing else. And you'll see him start to shuffle across before McNamara's arm comes over. Have another look at that as Ali comes in from the Randwick end. Phil Ali um, quite lively. Six overs, no wicket for 16. Fingers down the seam to Damien Martin. Just going back to Tom Moody for a moment. Watch his feet. There they go. And the ball is now on its way. Well, it's no wonder he got bowled. Leg stump was clearly visible. And it may be something Tom Moody needs to get organised before he goes overseas again this year. And no doubt for the rest of the Sheffield Shield season as well. Ball for 72 in the 22nd over. McNamara and Ali doing a good job here. Damien Martin on 25. Off 40 balls face, Damien Martin. He's aware now that he's got to bat through the 50 overs with Mike Valletta if possible. They're both fine cricketers. This is one Mercantile Mutual Cup game being played today, New South Wales and WA. The other one is down at the Adelaide Oval, Queensland and South Australia. Queensland 2 for 45 off 18 overs. South Australia won the toss and put them in. Trevor Varsby is 15. Jim Ma, who's a promising young player, is 18. The batsman out, Jeff Thomas and Stuart Law. Stuart Law was caught and bowled by Wigney. Wigney has taken both wickets. So we're having a great uh, season, the Mercantile Cup. Uh, series that's a great wicket for South Australia wore out for a duck oh. was made uh, big hundreds in this competition this summer it's a very close competition the mercantile mutual cup and there's a good crowd in here it's family day at the Sydney cricket ground organized by the New South Wales Cricket Association coming in uh, thousands quite a few thousand here already Good promotion by the New South Wales Cricket Association for the Mercantile Mutual Cup match on a Sunday. Mm. And off the over, it's four for 73. Prepare yourself for an awesome display of electrifying speed and raw muscle as the league's best battle for supremacy in World Sevens domination. The Coca-Cola Rugby League World Sevens, five o'clock tonight, and at 6.30, live coverage of the finals exclusive on nine. This is going to be a sale of the century returns with an all-star lineup. Those are real bad. <laughs> and the most sensational prizes. Be in it to win it when Glenridge and new hostess Nikki Buckley bring you a rousing celebrity challenge. Woo! The new sale of the century, Monday, 7 o'clock on 9. 4 for 73 here, Western Australia. Brad McNamara is going to bowl again. Damien Martin is taking strike. He's on 26 at the moment. Mike Valletta is uh, the non-striker. Good performance by New South Wales so far. 
and the way they've been playing is reflected in the crowd here today there's so many people in the old members lady stand and the bradman stands that they've opened up other parts of the ground now there are spectators being allowed onto the hill and into the brawongle stand and that is uh, that's nice to see it is a good promotion by bob radford and uh, his team at the new south wales cricket association nice to see thousands of people coming into these mercantile mutual cup games it's a close competition and New South Wales and Western Australia are two of the top sides in this competition. New South Wales on their fourth game now, they've got four points. Western Australia on their fifth game have four points. Queensland playing South Australia today. That's an important match for both teams. Yesterday, Tasmania picked up their first points against Victoria. So it's a very, as like with the Sheffield Shield, it's a tough competition. Every game so important. He's clubbed that to mid on, doesn't time it. And for the players, the Mercantile Mutual Cup, it can be big dollars won. Signs down the ground there on the side screen at both ends worth $110,000 today for a direct hit on the full. That's worth $110,000 if you can hit it straight down the ground. And there's one at mid wicket end cover. So six signs, $110,000. That would be in both matches at the Adelaide Oval here at the New South Wales Arena. And of course for the home viewer, he's in the act as well. Call that number, hit the sign, home viewer competition, 00556022. It's the name of the team you think will hit the sign. So $11,000 today, it's gone up $1,000 since yesterday. So each uh, match it goes up for the home viewer as well. So that's a fantastic home viewer prize. The Mercantile Mutual Cup hit the sign competition 00556022. So for the players and viewers alike, the chance of winning some big money. If you're over bold, it's four for 74. Music is a key to relaxation and so to good health. Ken Davis is Australia's premier composer and performer of health and relaxation music. Inspiration is his superb new release. Relax or simply be uplifted by Australia's finest collection of health and relaxation music. Look for this display and Ken Davis's superb new release, Inspiration, at all good music stores now. 27 for Martin, and the letter's not yet off the mark. He's faced five balls, and it's four for 74 here at the SCG. Beautiful day here in Sydney. We had uh, a good day down in Hobart yesterday where the Tasmanians defeated Victoria. That was a good win by Tasmania, uh, well led by Rodney Tucker. They'll be taking a great interest in proceedings here and at the Adelaide Oval today. Very important games. There's good prize money in these Mercantile Mutual Cup games and an awareness among all the players this summer that the expanded competition is very, very good for Australian cricket. Yes, as we see Gavin Robertson, the off-spinner, who was a match winner yesterday in the Sheffield Shield match, taking five wickets in the second innings. He's done a very good job for New South Wales this summer. Yes, the beauty of the Mercantile Mutual Cup is that the younger players are exposed to the public via television through Wide World of Sports. You see the young up-and-coming players some excellent young players around plus the good players like Emery the New South Wales captain and wicketkeeper he's doing a great job as captain as and as a wicketkeeper it's not an easy job it's a dual job very tough to be a wicketkeeper captain he's captain New South Wales the mercantile mutual and Sheffield Shield wins very good glove man behind Tim Zura and Ian Healy and a very handy batsman so it's going to be Robertson bowling right arm off spin to Damien Martin on 27. Damien Martin in good touch, but he's aware that there's plenty of overs left. This is only the 25th over. In fact, it's the 24th over. And really taking his time with his field. On 
time between deliveries and about a minute and a half. So I thought Emery making sure that Gavin Robertson fields exactly where he wants it. So the crowd building up by the minutes. Good crowd in. Perfect day. I guess that's uh, full credit to New South Wales because they have a promotional day here, the family day. But I think the players, New South Wales, always an aggressive, positive team in the four-day or one-day matches. A big win yesterday. They, they come from nowhere yesterday to pick up the six points against Western Australia. And that encourages the people to come. Mike Folletti hit the score. Very handy one-day cricketer. He's not a dasher. I thought he was a star in the World Cup win when he got about a couple of 40 knots, not outs in the middle order when Australia won the World Cup, Michael Boletta, but he's been overlooked of late in the one-day internationals. So many young players around. It's off the mark with a nice off drive. They should look for two. And they're coming back. That's good running by Damien Martin. The throw hits it would have been out. He's getting in. Wow, that's got to be very, very close. Umpire Bill Cameron from Young in New South Wales put the finger up. I thought it had to be a direct hit, but Damien Martin was a judged run out. What a good throw and take by the bowler, but my word, that was very close. Might turn out to be one of the great decisions of our time. Pretty good throw, it was well gathered, got rid of it quickly. Well, we will have a similar look at that but we'll be on the other side of the pitch when we come back it's five for 75. since most things revolve around saving money scurry into harvey norman we're helping sleepmaker clear their warehouse of drastic overstocks you can save up to 500 dollars on selected sleepmaker bedding pay a low 599 dollars for the health posture queen size ensemble and save 200. 999 dollars is all you'll pay for the luxury support queen size ensemble save a massive 500. this is a limited offer so hurry harvey norman because one good turn deserves another Welcome back. The ball punched down to the man at long off again. Well, that was a sensational bit of work by Robertson at the stumps there. It was good to see a bowl in good position. Damien Martin was going flat out. Shane Lee. And it was out. Brilliant throw by Shane Lee in the deep. It's five for 77. You know, Mercantile Mutual offers competitive insurance on everything from cars to household and commercial property, as well as some of the country's leading life and disability covers. They have tremendous strength in superannuation, finance and investment. But I reckon it's the award-winning speed and efficiency of their service that's made them so unshakable over the years. So if you're with Mercantile Mutual, rest assured, your future is in good hands. It's five for 77, it's McNamara from the member's end. Letter and Julian with a big job to do here. Well, we look at that run out. Uh, Damien Martin took on Shane Lee. There's the off drive. He's away quickly. He turns very quickly for the second run. Watch this throw and take by the bowler. Flat and hard. That's a top decision. Very good decision by umpire Bill Cameron. There is one uh, aspect I've no doubt the umpire will be watching keenly in all such run outs and that's which side of uh, the pitch he goes which side of the runner 
because he is a bit obscured there by Robertson. He's got to make the decision on uh, when the ball hits the stumps. And it can be difficult. It's not always easy for the umpires to decide whether they go to the side where the ball's being thrown or if they go behind the actual man taking the ball at the stumps. And uh, you can see here that it could pose a problem if uh, the bowler is blocking it out. He might just have got a little bit out of the road for the umpire, and it was a splendid decision. Bill Cameron on debut from Young in New South Wales. So not only do they pick country players in New South Wales, they pick country umpires as well. It's a good delivery right through Brendan Gillian. Plenty of bounce there for McNamara as well. Ball actually seen back. Brendan Gillian, a very handy low order player, but to need to bat well here today. It's very well bowled. Good crowd in. Tremendous atmosphere for a qualifying round of the Mercantile Mutual Cup here. Two top teams in operation. say that Western Australia don't play as well here in Sydney as they do maybe in Melbourne or at the Gabba. It seems to be their the ground where they do struggle. The variable bounce and turn in the four-day matches. It's good to see the players. I'm not sure whether they should be signing during overs, but it's a modern thing and the young fans very keen to get the autographs. That's great until you drop a catch when you're not looking. The captain gets very annoyed. Well bowled. It's five for 78. 60 minutes returns tonight. It is easy to get away with. Confessions of a fire bug. Just a cigarette liar. The terrible truth behind Sydney's worst fires. Crime with a capital C. Also, Gary Sweet, the sexiest bloke on TV. <laughs> oh, don't say it. Ladies man. Yes, I like women. But still mum's boy. The wonderful baby. <laughs> and kick out the migrants. Yarn event face to face with Britain's brutal racists. You'll just ship them back home. Right. Toyota presents 60 minutes, 7.30 tonight. Seen at the Sydney Cricket Ground, looking down towards the Noble and Bradman stands. Good crowd in. And uh, one feels uh, at the halfway stage, Western Australia probably not doing enough at five for 78. Zura Angel, Spencer, and Stewart to come. You know, the off spinner Robertson, who's picked up a wicket at the run out. Mike Valletta, he'll keep cool. He's a very experienced cricketer. Best player of uh, leg spin, Michael Vavetta, but a very good player of off spin. Played 21 one day internationals for Australia, Michael Vavetta, as he gets another single. And he's got a big job to do here, the experienced campaigner. He's 30 years of age. This is the one day interstate matches 907 runs, 108 50s, an excellent average, and a reasonable strike rate 62.6. His highest score at 100 was 105 not out against Queensland for the Gabba. So plenty of experience and uh, talent there in Michael Valletta. <laughs> Brendan Julian coming back for us two. Brendan Julian, on the other hand, a newcomer at the Tour of England. It was a learning curve for Brendan Julian. Played one very good innings with a bat in the test match. Good clean hitter. It's beaten by the arm ball there from Robertson. Brendan Julian. He's only 23, 14 matches. Average of only nine. A strike rate though of 82 and his highest score 17. Where he's got plenty of overs here today. He should be looking for his highest score ever in a one-day game for Western Australia. Plenty of overs left. Twenty-six overs gone. That's five for eighty-one. You know, when you choose Valvoline oil, you're buying the best possible protection for the best possible price. Which is why all these people choose Valvoline. People who know, use Valvoline. 
Who talks your language when it comes to a $1 sale on blinds and awnings where you can have them installed for just $1? Accent! Quick, phone the Accent Blinds hotline. Our $1 January sale is now on. Look for Accent in the white pages. Five for 81. Brad McNamara. Letter charges. Not sure why at the 27 over stage with five out. We saw that yesterday. Victorian batsman Ian Harvey charging. Got the inside of the pads onto the stumps. It was out bowled. A ball going down the leg side with so many overs to go. The run rate's reasonable enough. But they've lost five wickets. Now, William, I have one other aspect of that run-out to put to you. It was beautifully executed run-out, and the umpire gave his decision without the benefit of the third umpire in television in uh, the darkened room in the grandstand. Now, there it is. Stumps are broken. The umpire makes his decision. Now, up on the scoreboard, they were able to show that replay. So, in fact, if the umpire had made a blunder, it would have been there for everyone to see. It's four. Well, what's the question, Richie? The question is, should that be so? Well, I, I think so. I think that um, if you have got a, a replay screen and you see the LBWs that are given out and the court behinds as well, and I think you should see the runouts. I think the umpires are, are tough men. They know they're under a lot of pressure these days, but they are aware of that and they train hard to get everything right. And I think the fans are entitled to see the replays, good or bad decisions. That's good running by Brendan Julian. And it was interesting with that run out with umpire Bill Cameron. We talk about getting on the right and wrong sides, and that, that is important. But uh, I think the main thing is, is, in the end, as long as they give the right decision, he was certainly in position early. It's much safer to be on the other side because the bowler doesn't block your view, but there was no doubt that he had the ball onto the stumps there, and that was a good decision by umpire Bill Cameron. It's a tough job. They're under a lot of pressure of weight. It's a very good question, Richie, but I think the fans are entitled. They're going to come along to see everything we can possibly give them when we have a big screen. Well, it may be that uh, the Australian Cricket Board will have to introduce that uh, third umpire and television screen for all matches, not just for some. This is McDamara. And Julian has taken strike. Yep. Picks up a single, and it is five for 87. If getting the best deal is an uphill battle, come and see Harvey Norman. This month, we have Ball & Quattro Pro Spreadsheet with built-in training for only $195. The database standard. Ball & Paradox makes managing your business and personal information easy, and it's just $295. Buy Ball & Quattro Pro & Paradox together, and you'll save an additional $95 with the Ball & Super Pack. This is a limited offer, so hurry. Harvey Norman, for the best deals going round. And round. And round. Batsman out, Marsh for seven, Langer one, Martin 28, McPhee 27 and Moody four. It's Robertson, the off spinner operating from the Randwick end. Brendan Julian getting one down to fine leg. They're looking for one, he's coming back for the second and that's good running. Yes, the first man out was uh, Captain Jeff Marsh and the bowl was Neil Maxwell. Pretty good delivery this, ties the drive. Got an edge, I think it was an outside edge. At first I thought it was an inside edge. He was out for seven off 16 balls faced. It was one for 20. That was a good breakthrough by Neil Maxwell. That's an edge, gets past the wicket keeper. Top edge. I'll get at least two. Vleta coming back for the third. Just a little, not luck I think there for Brendan Julian. He put plenty of bat on that. There's no slip in. And it beat the wicket keeper with a bounce and thickest edge. Next batsman to go was Justin Langer, and he was very, very unlucky. He drove the ball to cover. There was a misfield. Back up and a good throw. And watch Phil Emery here charging back, and he dives, and he's run out for one off eight balls. It was two for 25. 
Davison, the fieldsman, a very good intelligent throw gave Emery a chance to get to the stumps. That was a vital run out for New South Wales. Next batsman to go was McPhee, who played pretty well. He was a judged LB. Well, it certainly looked like it was um, reasonably in line, but he was forward of the pop increase, and you have to be completely sure the ball is going to hit the stumps. He was out for 27. And then Tom Moody, who batted very well in the Shield game, was uh, all over the place. McNamara bowled. He got well across. You can see the leg stump. It's knocked back. He's clean bowled for four off seven deliveries. Tom can't believe it. It was four for 72. And then Damien Martin took on the fieldsman, Shane Lee. Oh, I thought there was two in it, but what probably beat him was the fact that Mark Lee was in so quickly. It was only about a, a 40, 50 metre throw in the end. And it was flat and it was hard, and Robertson did a good job. He was run out for 28 off 47. It was five for 76. So plenty of action here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Six off the over. It's five for 93. We are inside. Transmitting. Proceed, Delta and Gamma. Everything is rotted. We found something here. Check it. Still hygienic. We're now in the bathroom. Scan the surface. It's not a surface coating. It's an input resistance to bacteria. That explains the condition. Base, I think I found it. Sanitised. What the heck? Sanitised. Whatever it is, it's still working. Plenty of overs left for West Australia as a smiling Michael Whitney and Tony Gregg takes up the commentary. Thank you, Bill. Yes, a beautiful day here in Sydney, and that's the old scoreboard there. It uh, is just behind the Doug Walters stand, just peeping over the top. Then the name of Michael Whitney would have featured on that old scoreboard often. It's my uh, fellow commentator. There it is. Yes, Tony. I remember when I was a young lad coming out to watch the Sheffield Shield games in my early teens. It was uh, one of my vocations in life was to see my name up on the SCG scoreboard, and uh, probably in the, the first half of my career uh, before they built the electronic scoreboard. The old scoreboard was used. And they built the Doug Walters stand. Fitting memory of a great New South Wales and Australian cricketer. He's still seen at the ground very regularly. Right next to what was called the hill. Now Gabbers Hill, or Yabbers Hill, I should say. There's a, a Dougie Walters stand. Absolute legend, Yabbers Hill. And of course, the new scoreboard. Comfortable single there to Valletta. Yes, it's uh, it's interesting all the work that's gone on down that area. That hill area was all grass. There was no uh, big new. That area from there, all the way along, right at the back, all the way along there was all grass. Just down there, no seats at all. In fact, they had a few. I think there were a few seats along the fence yes they used to have old wooden seats probably 15 or 20 meters in the walkway behind but all grass hill at the back Once again that one swinging back just a little bit so mcnamara's figures now 5.4 overs two for 13. what a contribution he's made to this match yes very deceptive seam bowler brad mcnamara one of those fellows that skids onto you a little quicker and what you might expect jostles in off quite a short run it's uh, impressive hits the seam often swings the ball but he's always at you oh again the in swing resulting in the ball going off the inside edge of julian's bat there uh, once again he's producing the goods mcnamara he took three for 27 in the mercantile mutual final last year yes he's very competitive cricketer this young fella you see there a the ball wide Julian trying to whip that one away and only succeeding in getting the inside edge. A very near miss. Could have easily have cannoned into the stumps. Brad McNamara really doing the job for the Blues. 
that's well placed and the fielder just a little slow there. Davison diving over the top of that one with the throw bang on target. Chiqui, the fielder, it's five for 96. You know, Mercandale Mutual offers competitive insurance on everything from cars to household and commercial property. As well as some of the country's leading life and disability covers. They have tremendous strength in superannuation, finance and investment. But I reckon it's the award-winning speed and efficiency of their service that's made them so unshakable over the years. So if you're with Mercantile Mutual, rest assured, your future is in good hands. Very pleasant day. Sydney today, five for 96, Western Australia. Mission's pretty good here too. Good crowd, especially over in the members section. Yes, family day at the Sydney Cricket Ground. And the Cricket Ground positioned in the eastern suburbs of Sydney, just outside the area of the CBD, flanked by Moore Park and Centennial Park. Oh. And the weather, absolutely fantastic for this very important clash. So you look at the Sydney Cricket Ground, relayed earlier, at the end of last year, earlier in, in this cricket season. Just starting to show its true potential. Very good lush covering of grass. Outfield quick. Splendid conditions. It's quite amazing, actually. Peter Leroy has got this outfield nice and fast. He's obviously done a fair bit of rolling. And, uh, it really has come on very well in the second half of the season. And this pitch, which is being used today, which is bang, slap bang in the center of the square out there, it's a brand new pitch and it's played very well too. The ball is coming onto the bat. So Peter Leroy would be very happy. Oh, and that's at the stumps. Yes, he's got him. That's good fielding. Bale is coming in there. It's so important to hit the stumps. The letter on his way. New South Welshmen are alive here. Absolutely on fire. Trevor Bale is one of the veterans of New South Wales cricket. Brought back into this team. Julian flicking that one off his toes. And Bayless right there like a cat pounced on that. Direct hit. Mike Valletta well short of his ground. Crucial blow for the New South Wales team. And an absolutely vital blow for, for Western Australia. Valletta departs on 12. Western Australia are 6 for 97. We got the best chook going. At Red Rooster, we barbecue all our chooks, so they're always golden on the outside, tender and tasty inside. And right now, you can get a whole Red Rooster chook for just $5.95. That's right, just $5.95. So when you're ready for Australia's best, our delicious barbecued chooks are ready for just $5.95. Ready, red, round, around the round, the ready, red rooster. It's the tastiest deal going around. chance to experience the divine Miss M. Bette Midler's greatest hits, 14 beautiful songs. It's your best bet yet. Tim Zura out in the centre now. This is uh, an indication of how strong this batting lineup is. It really has failed him a bit today, but Zura has the highest score of 57, strike rate of 70. He's capable of hanging around there so he and Julian now are really going to have to put pull um, this side around a bit they really are struggling six for 97 run rate at 3.25 it's the end of the over and there's uh, a lot of pressure on Tim Zura Brendan Julian um, up and coming all rounder here's another look at the Trevor Bayless direct hit. He was in a position very early, Bayless. Good underarm throw, one bounce. Right on the stumps, and Mike Valletta, an absolute mile out of his crease. And umpire Darrell Hare judging in the affirmative. Evan Robinson, the off spinner. 
Once Trevor Bayless here sets himself to you, I thought it was a very enterprising run. Having a look at it from there, he looked like he hit it straight to Trevor Bayless. And he's been one of the uh, shining lights in New South Wales in the field over the years. Very good pair of hands, excellent arm. Been brought back into this team for the one day game for his experience. A very quick score of runs. I'm sure that'll be an enormous boost to his confidence. There's no doubt that uh, Valletta was run out there. Julian called for one, having hit the ball straight to the fieldsman. So Maxwell now back into the attack. He bowled five overs from the opposite end. He started off at the Randwick end. He's now been switched around to the Paddington end. And his figures, five overs, no maidens, one for 28. As the bowl is used today, six in all. Yes, he'll probably be back to maybe just bowl one or two overs here in the middle, looking for a wicket. Trying to remove another Western Australian batsman. Your leg by. Capitalise on this excellent performance by New South Wales. They've really kept a roll on from yesterday afternoon where they crushed the Western Australian team in the last innings. Bowled them out cheaply, got the runs one down. Took six outright points to move them on top of the table. Strange how much an advantage the home ground advantage is. Western Australia play very well in Perth. New South Wales extremely well at the SCG. That's, all, uh, that's the run rate that has ended up at 3.24. And you can see how it really has danced all over the place as the wickets have fallen so things have become a little tougher for them then they build it back and then all of a sudden a wicket falls and you see a few more problems for them so um, just having a look at that things were beginning to build up quite nicely there until the wickets fell in that area there so uh, we had a bit of a slow time and then we saw martin helping to lift it a little bit then a wicket fell of course and it fell away again of those two there few good overs other wicket down here so really every time they get things going they lose a wicket and that's not the way to play sure it wasn't their plan but it's amazing how losing wickets brings the run rate to a grinding hot unless you're really lucky someone comes in there and plays an absolute blinder perhaps it's going to be zura today or even julian julian on strike 20 balls mind you for nine runs placement just for one and that brings up the hundred six for 100 Australian FAI IndyCar Grand Prix, March 17 to 20. So 31 overs have been bowled. It's a 50 over match, six for 100. Can the Western Australians get themselves back on track here? In, we know can hit it. They've got two men back in the deep. Uh, Zura, of course, is very capable and very experienced. A widely spread field. Got to use up the 50 overs. Davidson, the fieldsman. Yes, he certainly is a big hitter, Brendan Julian. Got Davidson there, making a very good save. Hit a couple of enormous sixes in the Shield match out here. In fact, I would think he's hit a lot of sixes in his career. It's them very clean. Very good young prospect. Just working that one onto the leg side for an easy single. Very good all-round all young cricketer, this man. Has potential as a left-arm medium-fast bowler. 
I think he's got a few things to work on with his action. And once he gets it together, a great prospect for Australian cricket. The other end is Tim Zura, very, very experienced cricketer for the Western Australians, test cricketer. Very good record for his state, both first class and one day games. Been around a long time, Zura, been understudy for a long time as well. A lot of people believe he should have been the man to get the job before Ian Healy, but Healy's made that job his own now. But still a very, very fine gloveman. Good over, just one from it, six front and one. You know, when you choose Valvoline oil, you're buying the best possible protection for the best possible price. I mean, you mightn't want to run the world's top motorsport teams with it, nor to protect millions of dollars worth of equipment with it. And you may never want to run major transport fleets with it. Some people do. That's why they choose Valvoline oils. People who know Use Valvoline. Six front and one score. Crowd have coming to watch this Mercantile mutual match. Maxwell's going to continue. Right arm over the wicket. And one of the advantages of uh, being a television commentator, cricket commentator, is that every now and again one of your co-commentators writes a book. And uh, more often than not, he tends to bring it into the commentary box. And I can tell you that I've got one here, Quick Wit it's called, my uh, commentator, Michael Whitney, has put uh, pen to paper and I just flicked through it. There's some very, very interesting stories in it, which I might just ask him about quickly. It's wider the fieldsman and uh, that one going down to mid-wicket. Get two. The first one that struck me, Michael, was this incredible story about Rod Marsh, where it seems that he almost came to blows in the dressing room. Yes, we had a rather well, large altercation, I should say, on the field during the Sheffield Shield final, 1982-3, and it was over an incident. Uh, I don't want to say too much, Greggy, because for, well, I say fortunately, <laughs> Roddy and I are on better terms these days. I think we both matured a little bit, and uh, but yeah, it, it nearly came to blows in the dressing room. So uh, that is an interesting story. I thought you blacks were all supposed to be such friendly guys in the dressing room. Just left everything on the field. Well, that's a big hit, and this could be out. Will it get there? Yes, he's got it. No, he's dropped it. Well, way up there it was, and it was up there for a long, long time as well. And Robinson has dropped it. Yes, well, that'll be a disappointment for Gavin Robertson. That was a good piece of bowling, and there's Julian opening his shoulders he's a big hitter of the cricket ball he looked like he made easy ground there just grasping at the end and really should have taken that catch it could be a vital moment in this game I'm sure gavin robertson would be disappointed there that's why he's there at long on to take the catch he'd be very disappointed if a few disappear over his head in the next few overs back for the second and comfortably home it's just getting back to Michael Whitney's book, Quick Wit. Some interesting stories on Bobby Simpson as well. You and Simo have obviously had your good times and you've had some tough times as well. I think when you're very close, Simo and I have been very close over a long period of time, but certainly there was some decisions and some things that, that he didn't, did while I was in the team that I didn't agree with, and I wanted to write about that in the book. It's very difficult to, to, to make statements like that in, within the team. Uh, but, you know, this book was something that I wanted to write about my life, and... I try not to hold back. So what, this is pretty deep stuff, eh? This is right from the heart, Whitney? Yeah, I think I've, I've basically given this book my guts. It's taken three years to write it because uh, when we first decided to do it, I started to get picked again. I went to the West Indies and Sri Lanka and played in the World Cup and a, a full series here against India. And that then became another chapter, another chapter, another chapter. So, But I've had a great time in writing it, Tony. It's been sensational. Good, uh, good luck with it, too. Seven runs of that over, six for 108. Tuesday night, a brilliant double not to be missed. At 7.30, Joe Beth Taylor presents all new hiccups, mishaps and setups in the return of Australia's Funniest Home Video Show. It'll shake your nerves and rattle your brain. 
then at eight, join Steve Jacobs for the premiere of a word from our sponsor. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to accompany me. A collection of the world's most outrageous commercials. <laughs> Following Australia's Funniest Home Video Show, Tuesday night on Channel 9. me. He's my first child. I didn't really know what to expect. He's a bright young kid with a lot going for him. My greatest hope for the future is that he doesn't get caught up in the negativity that's so prominent in a lot of Australians nowadays in these trying times. And I also want him to realise what Australia has going for it and that he can draw from that and hopefully put something back into it. Whether you're drinking it in the sun with friends or just doing it solo, you can enter the Sunkist and Solo Summer Plunge. You could win a fantastic Daihatsu Ferosa four-wheel drive. Sailboards, surfboards, jet ski, mountain bike, kayaks, plus heaps of instant win prizes. So dive into wherever you buy your Solo and Sunkist and take the Summer Plunge. Banana, 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 make those bodies sing. Make those bodies sing. Reserves for New South Wales and a very young Ian Frankish out there, the 13th Manwood. Yes, young Ian Frankish. Uh, the Telegraph Mirror this week in Sydney ran a competition, Be a Blue for the Day, to fit in with the family day here at the SCG. And young Ian Frankish is a young 12 year old, he lives at Lane Cove and goes to St Ignatius College. He's won the great honour of being the 13th man for New South Wales. They tell me he's absolutely cricket mad and has just returned from a trip to watch the Adelaide Test in which Australia won. So no doubt this will be a day that he will remember for a long time in his life. Someone obviously had to lend uh, young Ian Frankish a pair of trousers there and to make him feel comfortable. And they put a big thigh pad in there for him as well. So what a day he's having down in the Blues dressing room for the day. And uh, on the subject of, we've talked about Michael Whitney's book. What about this video? Apparently, according to the festival people, it's going through the roof. The sales on this video are absolute, absolutely unbelievable. And I don't suppose we should be surprised, but we've had all these inquiries prior to making that video. And uh, it's now available all around the country, $24.95. And some tremendous... Uh, features in that video one of which of course some very interesting catches that were taken during the day uh, Alan Bordeaux's Alan Bordeaux's tribute match video there highlights uh, some interesting aspects of the commentary as well where we linked up with some of the players out on the ground spoke to them about what they were trying to do just as the bowler was running in and what the bowler was trying to do on occasion so it's really quite interesting an eye out for it very popular indeed yes maybe the forerunner of some progressive ideas apparently Paul Vorton has ordered a thousand copies himself he had an enormous day taking a brilliant catch in the outfield always fat he's always involved with something it was a, a marvelous day for cricket and certainly some initiative shown by Channel 9 BBL marketing with the cameras in the helmets and microphones out there. A splendid day. It's a really fun video, so keep an eye out for that. Six for 109. 
Since most things revolve around saving money, scurry into Harvey Norman. We're helping Sleepmaker clear their warehouse of drastic overstocks. You can save up to $500 on selected Sleepmaker bedding. Pay a low $599 for the Health Posture Queen Size Ensemble and save $200. $999 is all you'll pay for the Luxury Support Queen Size Ensemble. Save a massive $500. This is a limited offer, so hurry. Harvey Norman, because one good turn deserves another. Welcome back. Well, uh, that's a pretty useful hat. It'll certainly keep the sun off his head. It's also, uh, I think, backs up as a seat. Nice if someone just come along and plonk themselves down on his head. Lucky he's a reasonably tall, that young boy. <laughs> if he's any shorter than that, they mightn't sit him so. see him sitting there in the crowd. Shane Lee joins the attack. In the Paddington end. Very enthusiastic young all rounder. But some of his problems are, on occasions, can't control his line and length, and a wide call by umpire Darrell Hare. Has to learn to bowl on one side of the wicket. He's quite sharp, hits the seam, often swings the ball. Very good athlete. Very handy lower order batsman. Athletic in the field. I saw him throw the stumps down today. Effect a run out. Young players being produced from everywhere. And just uh, sliding in as well. It's apparently uh, Shane Lee's normally a pretty accurate bowler. He's uh, he bowled two overs and conceded 16 runs. Now he's back for his second spell. One of the things he's got to be a little careful of is uh, trying to swing the ball around too much in these one-day matches. The big thing is to keep it accurate. Problems that swing bowlers have is that if it, if it swings a little bit more than normal, down the leg side and perhaps be given wide, be spot on straight. So that's the perfect spot there. Probably just a tad over pitched, allowed tall Brendan Julian to get on the front foot play the drive but you can cover your options in those areas you have to bowl to your field the name of this game is the team with the most runs wins it's crucial to take wickets as well you must try and bowl good line and length and keep the runs down put pressure on the batsman it's our 13th man young Ian Frankish there delivering something out to the players They're having a momentous day in the Blues dressing room The other Mercantile Mutual match which has been played today has been played over in Adelaide and Queensland are in trouble over there. No doubt uh, a good wicket. But uh, have a look at that. Seven for 84 of 30 overs. Oh, um, it really is happening over there. It's not the sort of score one comes to associate with the pitch at the Adelaide Oval. So uh, South Australia really getting amongst the Queenslanders. It's Queensland on top of the Mercantile Mutual Cup competition at the moment. I agree with you, Tony. Certainly not a score you'd expect to see from Adelaide Oval, but Queensland struggling. That one not bouncing at all. This is the general story of the SCG wicket. So wicket gets a little bit of sun on it. it starts to keep very low. That one's just bounced through to wicket keeper Phil Emery. You have to be careful playing your horizontal bat shots on this sort of wicket and no doubt it will become slower as the day goes on. Sometimes a very hard place to chase runs. Straight to mid wicket. Just a slightly slower delivery there. So apparently they've shared the wickets. The South Australians in that match against Queensland. So no one really standing out. It's obviously a good team effort by them. Meanwhile, the uh, Western Australians having a bit of a nightmare over in Sydney. They've been comprehensively beaten in the Shield match. And uh, fronting up today, the Mercantile Mutual Cup just struggling at the moment. It's nicely played. Into the gap, they'll come back for two. 
So the score, six for 114. Stand there and the lady stand in the background. Six for 114. Commentary box now. It's going to be Jeff Lawson and Richie Benno. It's turning afternoon, everyone. Morning in uh, some parts of Australia. We're uh, we're watching the present situation of this match with uh, a certain amount of trepidation over in the West. This is the. 36th over. Six for 115. And it just follows on yesterday, Geoffrey, from uh, what happened to WA against New South Wales. Very similar pattern falling here, though. I must admit, Brendan Julian's looking fairly aggressive. He's trying to get on with it. Maybe he feels that 160, 170 will be enough to win this game. Certainly seen some low scores. You see as many tyres score in this competition now. We've seen some low scores win matches at the SCG. I think the New South Wales players will, will bat a little bit better on this surface. It's certainly slow, a little bit of turn, but nothing unusual for the SCG. Some excellent fielding from New South Wales, and that excellent fielding has resulted in a number of those dismissals. Well, there are three runouts there. McPhee was playing. Uh, but I think he would agree is uh, an extraordinary stroke. Marsh was a straightforward catch at the wicket, and Moody allowed his uh, leg stump to become exposed. Uh, when they sit down to do their sums after the game, I think uh, there'll be a certain amount of frowning around the WA dressing room table. They've certainly assisted a little in their problems out there at the moment. Six for 116 now. Fielding has been brilliant from New South Wales and they've bowled well. And some very good cricket to watch. Six for 117. That lady asked for a nice salad. I said, don't take that one, take this one. It's only got half the fat. <laughs> How come, she says, it looks the same. Kraft mayo, I said. Kraft only has half the fat of some other regular mayonnaises, so naturally it's better. OK, she says, and she loved it. So then she says, seeing it's only got half the fat, you can give me twice as much. A healthy salad naturally deserves Kraft mayonnaise. Now also in a new easy squeeze from Kraft. Six for one one seven of Western Australia, struggling along, although this has been a fruitful partnership. Brendan Julian, 24 of 38. Tim Zura, uncharacteristically slow, but he has to occupy the crease and give Brendan Julian some support. Last wicket fell at 97. So 20 runs now for this partnership, and that may not sound a lot, but in the context of the scoreline, six for one one seven, it certainly is valuable. Wayne Holsworth has now come on the Paddington end of the excellent opening spell of seven overs for 14. We've had three run outs and uh, it wasn't all that far away from being the fourth. Very close to being the fourth. That's a tough, tough ask to the umpire, but I think he's made the right one there and without the aid of the video replay. And another excellent throw from the New South Wales fieldsman. I think this stumps a number of times. 
Bill Cameron making his debut and he's made some good decisions today to Bill Cameron. Brendan Julian, 24. He's now the third highest scorer. Very fortunate to still be there. He was only on 13 when he attempted to loft Maxwell into the outfield. I'm not quite sure why he'd be playing that stroke at that time of the innings. And Gavin Robertson, who usually has got fantastic hands, made a real meal of that one. And that is about the only New South Wales fielding blemish so far. That's why Brendan Julian's still out there. been a lot of uh, playing too early out there by the Western Australian batsmen. They're used to faster, bouncier pitches. Ball's coming off quite slowly by comparison here. Now, uh, that last run out, not much in it. Evan Robertson is the man coming around, gathers it in. Having a pretty good day, Bill Cameron, so far. He's having an excellent day. He comes from the country, Bill Cameron. Comes from Young, down in the southwest of New South Wales. It's about 100 miles from Wagga. That's why I know where Young is. <laughs> and it's not so far from Kurawatha either, I can tell you. Not far from Kurawatha or Stock and Bingle or Wombat or Grenfell. Well, there's a lot of people watching the cricket down there today and watching Bill Cameron's performance in particular. There's Kurawatha, not very far from Young, is a uh, place where my father had his, uh, not quite his first teaching appointment way back in uh, 1929, but just about his first. And uh, he was the one teacher at a school with 24 pupils. I think Kurawatha's shrunk since then, Rich. Six for 190. Seven overs gone now. We to the 38th. Gavin Robinson, the New South Wales off spinner. He took five wickets yesterday against West Australia. He's still in action here. Almost a misfield there. We haven't seen too many of those today. Gavin Robinson's done an excellent job for his skipper. Just 18 runs so far with 7.1 overs. Good stroke that they will look for three it's a long throw from out near the boundary but they only get two there's an excellent throw came in there Shane Lee out in the outfield banished to the outfield after only one over he bowled his first two overs for 15 his last over for five he was taken off replaced by Holsworth sent out the deep cover Brendan Julian certainly taking an impressive and aggressive approach, I should say. Impressive and aggressive approach. He'll make these runs quickly. He's still got 12 overs left after this. Tim Zura trying to beat the man at backward point. Tried the front foot late cut as the back foot firmly anchored behind the crease and Phil Emery took the bails off, but no appeal on that occasion. As the arm ball from Gavin Robinson went straight on with the arm. 
Gavin Robinson has big shoes to fill. He's replaced Greg Matthews in the New South Wales side. He's done very well since that occasion. He's made runs. He's taken wickets. Very good cricketer. That's beautifully placed. Won't go for four. Just be picked up a yard or so inside the boundary. Six from that over, six for 122. And now, from Michael Bolton, the vocalist of the 90s, comes the one thing. Michael Bolton's sensational new album, The One Thing, featuring the hit single, Said I Loved You But I Love. Don't miss Michael Bolton live in concert on his first Australian tour. The new album from Michael Bolton, The One Thing. Angel, Spencer and Stewart to follow. What a great deal of batting strength in the WA tail, although Joe Angel's coming off his career best score in the Sheffield Shield match. 84 not out. Brendan Julian and Tim Zura have the job in front of them. It's Tim Zura facing Wayne Holsworth. A fairly orthodox field from Phil Emery at this stage of the game, approaching the last 10. And there we have the field inside the circle. Three on the offside. Just the one man on the leg side. A lot of territory to cover over there. A line of three plus the man, a deep third man. That's basically the offside field. Followed by deep mid-off and a deep extra cover. So pretty regulation one-day field getting towards the close of the innings. Bill Emery's done an excellent job for New South Wales. He's taken over from Mark Taylor last season. This season, New South Wales have won the double last year. This year, they're on top of the shield table. They're two from two so far in the Mercantile Mutual Cup. Surprisingly, at the SCG, they've lost four to WA and only won two. Davidson. Here's the man who made the throw for the run out of Justin Langer. Only a small man, but he's got a good arm. No pressure on that occasion. They decide not to go for the second, but he made Phil Emery's job quite simple. The worst thing you want as a wicketkeeper on those easy throws when there's no play on is a, a throw in the dirt, the half volley, or over your head. Like the lobs, straight in your gloves. I look for two here. They don't take it. There's plenty of respect for the New South Wales throwing arms in this WA side. At times Shane Lee did the feeling out on the back of the square leg fence. And Holsworth now in his ninth over. Brendan Julian, the man who will be bowling to. Julian's got 29. He's now the top scorer of Western Australia. In front of Martin's 28. And McPhee's 27. Very firmly struck. He's a good cricketer, Brendan Julian. I was an advocate, uh, an advocate of him uh, being chosen to go to South Africa, mainly for the balance of the side. He's a left-arm pace bowler and a good striker of the ball as a right-hander, as is shown by that stroke. He likes to hit on the offside. That's the arc he likes to go in most of the time. So far today, he's tried to hoik a few on the leg side, and only succeeded in getting inside edges. But when he goes that direction, over mid-off and wider, that is his strength. That time he picked up the Wayne Holes with slower ball and put it away for four. Six for 133. You know, Mercandale Mutual offers competitive insurance on everything from cars to household and commercial property, as well as some of the country's leading life and disability covers. They have tremendous strength in superannuation, finance and investment. But I reckon it's the award-winning speed and efficiency of their service 
that's made them so unshakable over the years. So if you're with Mercantile Mutual, rest assured, your future is in good hands. Six for 133, 34 to Julian. Now he's got those all 47 balls. Tim Zura eight from 24, but uh, the important thing, the really important thing is that they bat out their full 50 overs. They're into the 40th now. This is um, Robertson's ninth over, maximum 10 in these 50 over side matches. 3.39, they're just gradually easing that up a little bit. Shane Lee is the man out at deep cover. He'll come in now for Tim Zura into uh, a normal position. At cover, three on the offside inside the fielding circle, two on the on. Tim Zura has done it pretty sensibly so far. He's a man who does like to play the big shots. A very good cutter and puller, Tim Zura. Also a good driver. But he's been prepared to just knock Robinson down the ground. Take those singles to long on. It's a pretty sensible stuff. Situation's a little similar to yesterday when uh, the Victorians failed to bat out their full 50 overs, got through just over 47, and that was uh, an absolute waste. At least you've got to give your bowlers every opportunity, and uh, even if it doesn't seem much, if you keep on scoring three or four and over, could just take it slightly out of the reach of the opposition if they lose a few early wickets. Could look for two here. Wow. Six for 138. 8.30 Thursday on 9. We've got the film. The King, Graham Kennedy, joins Ray Martin. Did you really? Did you catch on fire? Yes. To relive a lifetime of laughter, Graham Kennedy, Ray Martin presents a 60th birthday tribute, 8.30 Thursday. Returning Friday, an all-new ah. season of Berg's Backyard with the latest on soil mixes and watering. See that? It's still dry inside. Plus, Paradise Beach star Robert Colby, an exciting new video pet competition and heaps more on Berg's Backyard, Friday, 7.30 on 9. Brendan Julian's got 36 off 50. It's proving to be a key inning so far. There's some work to be done out there. We're only into the 41st over, 40 bold. WA can continue along just four and over. Another 40 runs up around the 180 mark. They're in with some sort of chance. These two have certainly got a job in front of them. Angel, Spencer and Stewart to follow. A lot of depth there in 9, 10 and 11. So it's up to these two. It'll be a wide. Well, the last two or three minutes have been quite interesting for Wayne Holdsworth. First of all, the wide, and then this. Well, the fast bowlers aren't noted for their thinking in the field. There was always two in it. They, they didn't spoil a run out or anything. Wayne Holdsworth does the fielding and treads on Michael Bevan's foot with the big spikes. Let's have a look right on his right foot. Ouch. Oh, and Wayne Holdsworth has very long spikes in those boots. I don't think Michael Bevan would have been too happy with that. up two there. Is that all fast bowlers in the field, Jeffrey? Not all fast bowlers. They like to think they can keep out of their fellow fieldsmen's way most of the time. There should have been a call out there for that piece of feeling. Wayne Holdsworth coming around to his left, and he's right-handed, but Bevan coming from his right, but he's left-handed, so they uh, wasn't the ideal combination. Certainly there should have been a call out there. The fast bowlers, because they field at fine leg, they don't spend a lot of their time with people. So when they get on the field near people, not quite sure what to do.
It'd be a very lonely existence down at Fine League, Richie. I, I dare say you didn't spend a lot of your career there. In the, in the catching positions, it's a different game, but down at Fine League, after a decade or so, you get used to have, having no one in your personal space. Usually you've got no one within 60 metres of you. Well, I started off as uh, third man, Fine League, in the covers well away from the catching positions i couldn't get in there there were so many good fielders around but uh, i moved in later on to the gully and yeah there's quite a bit more chatting goes on in those close catching positions fielding today with the exception of just one or two slightly bizarre things has been very good Two men around uh, deep mid on, deep mid off. Rodney Davison is one. It's a pretty good fielder, plays with uh, the Randwick Club. Pulled off a terrific run out earlier in the day. Yes, it was Rodney Davison who made that excellent throw to see Justin Langer stranded after the misfield. A small man, Davidson, but he has got a good throwing arm, moves well in the field. That's probably why they didn't take that second run to him. He's seen him in action already. And the game entering a crucial period. New South Wales were well on top at six, or six for 97, in fact, it was. These two have taken it on to 142. Good bang from Zura. Primarily Brendan Julian. Phil Emery's got some decisions to make. Just checking with the umpire. Was there one delivery left? New South Wales can't let WA get away at this stage. Six for 143. If getting the best deal is an uphill battle, come and see Harvey Norman. This month, we have Ball & Quattro Pro Spreadsheet with built-in training for only $195. The database standard. Ball & Paradox makes managing your business and personal information easy, and it's just $295. Buy Ball & Quattro Pro & Paradox together, and you'll save an additional $95 with the Ball & Super Pack. This is a limited offer, so hurry. Harvey Norman, for the best deals going round. And round. And round. Six for 143, 27 to McPhee, 7 Marsh, Langer made 1, Martin 28. Moody 4, Valletta 12, Brendan Julian's 39, Tim Zura, who's taking strike now, is 12. This is one of the two Mercantile Mutual Cup games being played today, the other at the Adelaide Oval, Queensland struggling. 36 overs gone, not quite as many as here, and they are 7 for 108. Seven for 108, Queensland, who are on top of the Mercantile Mutual Cup table at the moment. Gavin Fitness is 17, not out. Michael Kasperwitz, the all-rounder, is eight. Jim Maher was out for 18. Jeff Thomas, seven. Stuart Law, a duck. Law has been having a very good summer. So there's Queensland up the top with six points. But they're struggling against South Australia, who desperately need two points from this game. They'll have played the same number of games as Queensland. Queensland 6, New South Wales 4, and WA also 4. New South Wales have a game in hand there, so they're in good shape, as indeed they are in the Sheffield Shield now. Also, their net run rate is the best of all the teams. And down at the MCG next Sunday, Sunday 13th of February, Get uh, tickets at Basso 311522 or 008 338998. Bowling. Well, Julian will regret that. That is uh, not good cricket. We're into the 42nd over. Now you've got the tail coming in. And there was still plenty of room for manoeuvre for both uh, Zura and Julian. And this has given New South Wales a strong grip on the game. 
Well, it wasn't good cricket, not just from that stroke play at this time of the game, but also because previously he'd backed away and tried to cut and was almost stumped. We thought that Brendan Julian would have learned his lesson from that. He, his top scored 39 off 57. He's done an excellent job, but I can't help but think he's let his side down just fractionally there. Seven for 144. And that's in the 42nd over. Seven for 144. And it's goodbye to Sydney viewers. It's been a very good morning. And if you want to come down and see the game here at the SCG, you'll be very welcome. Time Mutual Cup after a six wicket win over Western Australia at the SCG. The Sandgropers were dismissed for 162 thanks to some brilliant fielding by the Blues. In reply, they reached the target in the 46th over, Chiqui and Bevan doing the damage. The visitors won the toss and the early contest with Maxwell, but once online, he had the edge on Marsh. Yeah! A sharp return by Davidson found a flying Emery and Langer departed. That's a big break for McNamara wrapped McPhee on the pads, three for 60. The bus, Moody lost his leg stump to McNamara. Dear, oh dear. Bayless too quick for Valletta in run out number three. The big crowd was enjoying a repeat of yesterday's collapse by WA. Julian held out for 39, but then misread Robertson. Big Phil Alley whipped off the tail, Angel first, Inside air. then scored a direct hit to cut down Spencer. Second, that's got to be close this time. First ball of the last over, Alley to Zura, and Maxwell made it 163 for victory. He's got it, he's got it, yeah. Chiqui was quickly into swing, right off the meat of the bat, while Davidson paid the price for early aggression. Well, he's out, he didn't clear back with square leg. Chiqui's timing was sweet as WA's hopes soured. He struck away. He soon had his second 50 for the weekend. That large crowd acknowledging Richard Chiqui's 50. The threat of a storm saw Bevan up the pace. And then not only a drop catch, but four runs to the score. A seagull managed to do what some couldn't, but paid the price for his efforts. Having set them on a winning course, Chiqui fell to Stewart. Hold him. Bevan nailed it shut, keeping the Blues undefeated. Into the gap. Peters, National 9 News. In one day, interstate cricket match. Miserable weekend for Western Australia when they stormed to an easy victory at the SCG. Again, it was disappointing batting by the West Australian big names and superb fielding by the New South Wales youngsters that made the difference. After the batting debacle yesterday, WA won the toss, hoping not to buckle to the Blues today. Come the sixth over, Jeff Marsh was first to go for seven to Neil Maxwell. Got him, inside edge. Then a horrible mix-up saw Justin Langer on his way for one. The acrobatics from Phil Emery. And to Damian Martin, he made his intentions obvious. What a shot. With WA 2 for 60, Emery introduced Brad McNamara with immediate success. McPhee gone for 27. McNamara's next over left Tom Moody stunned. Dear, oh dear. Tom doesn't know what's happening. Then the vital scalp of Martin, chancing a second to Shane Lee, WA crashing to be 5 for 76 in the 24. Hits it would have been out. He's given in. Mike Valletta continued the risky business. Trevor Bayless the perfect reply. Brendan Julian and Tim Zura saved the side from embarrassment. The pair putting on 47 for the seventh wicket. Julian top scored with 39 in WA's total of 162. Rodney Davison and Richard Chiqui got the Blues off to a good start, putting on 38. Davison first to go for 12. Oh, he's out. Chiqui was superb. He and Michael Bevan sharing in a 95-run stand. Well, Michael Bevan didn't just punish the WA attack on the way to an unbeaten 64. Just got him. Jeff Marsh has the bird in hand. Chiqui eventually falling for a well-made 66. Hold him. The Blues easy victors by six wickets on a weekend WA won't care to remember. Into the gap.